Hi everybody, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Good. And today's video is going to be a bit different because I'm going to be sharing some books and tools and things that I use for referencing. So this is mainly for when I'm looking at flowers or looking for colour inspiration for colour palettes, things like that. And um, hopefully it will help in some way. I put up a post at the weekend um, we had been to a National Trust property and I'd seen all these flowers and it got me thinking about um, this sort of thing and maybe sharing some of the things that I use to help me. Um, if you can hear any noise, that's just because um, obviously um, I live in a house with the rest of my family and they're talking. So um, just bear with me if you can hear them. Um, so I am going to share a few things that are on the Internet, because obviously in this day and age, the Internet is a huge part of our our life um, and I will kind of get to those in a minute but first I thought I would share some of the books that I do use quite a lot and I would highly highly recommend um, any of these especially if you're into flowers and nature and things like that so the book that I probably use the most just because it's got really really accurate drawings of things um, is this book Wildflowers of Britain month by month by Margaret Erskine Wilson now I got this book um, last year probably back in January it was went right when I started my channel and I have shown this book quite a few times on my channel and that's because I really really like it now this book is quite small it's a really really compact size and it's really really thick sorry I've put this um paper underneath that keeps sliding um so you get each month and the idea uh, with this was that um margaret wilson uh, painted all of these in a sketchbook throughout her life and uh, curated it all herself and it goes through all the months of lots of different flowers and it's absolutely gorgeous so you have all of the index of all the common names in the back and also on this page for example you can also see that each of the flowers has their name next to it in the same colour so you'll be able to tell which um, which one's which so for example there's a purple you can't really see because it's quite small but there's foxglove written in the same purple as the foxgloves so it's um, quite easy to tell what's what on the left hand side you then get the um, English name or the the common name of the uh, flowers and then the Latin names underneath so you can search up either and you would um, get what the flower is also on most of these pages um, there's a few notes that she's written so here for example honeysuckle fruits August um, and location Salisbury so there's just a little bit of information about them which I think really makes it stand out because it shows that you know this was a um, throughout her life that she created it so there's so so many pages it's amazing so I'm just going to show you a few examples um, they were all done with watercolour I think and there's a huge variety some of the months are longer than others the August one is quite long I think June or July is probably the longest um, and then September, October and November are quite short and December just because they don't tend to be as many flowers and things in the um, end months um, but she's included lots and they're gorgeous so the reason that I love this book is because they're very accurate and also as colourists it's very hard to replicate something exactly um, with colour pencil or marker or whatever you're using if you're trying to make it look realistic, um, there's probably still going to be uh, a, a few small things uh, where it's not exactly accurate, and that could be down to the um, <clears throat> sorry, that that could be down to the artist and how they've drawn it, or it could be down to maybe not having certain colours or just the positioning or something like that. Um, so the thing I really like about this is because they're pictures based from. Um, real flowers you've already got that secondary um example of it anyway so 
you're you're basically referencing the artwork of someone else but the artwork here is very realistic and it is accurate so um you know there's a number of different ways you can use this i have looked for certain flowers and used them specifically so um i've definitely looked at the foxglove and you're like right i'm going to try and replicate that um but also the really nice thing that, about this is that lots of the pages together just kind of make a really nice color palette so this one for example it's mainly purples and yellows with a f with some greens obviously but a few orangey bits um, and the red on the flower so you could just take the colors on this page and use that as a color palette similarly here there's some really nice brownish red colors with some purples and greens and yellow so you know you could, that could be a color palette as well so she's really thought about the um the positioning of everything on the page and also um, what flowers she's going to include on each page um, and it's very very well thought out so each page in itself is almost a, a colour palette so there's so much you can do with this book. Now obviously I'm not going to do a full flip through because it would take ages because uh, there's so many pages but you kind of get the idea there's um, so many gorgeous images and it did take her a while to complete I believe. Um, she passed away fairly recently. Oh here we go, so it began in 1943 um, until about 1990 but she, she died before it was continued? No. Oh no, her friend, sorry, so I'll just read this to you. I, I have not made complete sense at all there. So, um, began in 1943 for a friend who said, I might learn the names of flowers if you drew them for me in the months they're in flower. After her death, I repossessed them and continued the project until about 1990. I think about three quarters of the British flora are represented. So that was June 1999. So, um, I think she, maybe she hasn't passed away then. I'm not sure. Um, but it's such a gorgeous book and as I said there's so many things you can do with it I will try and link this down below just because it's m one of the more obscure things um, I found it at a uh, garden centre slash maybe it was a national, oh, no, I don't think it was National Trust but at this amazing garden centre with so many books and things and it was gorgeous sorry for the glare um, but I will try and find a link for this because it is quite obscure I I'm pretty sure we can get it on Amazon, but um, I'll have a look um, and see if I can find that. Um, but most other things you'll be able to get on Amazon, and I'm not showing too many um, things really. Um, so the next things that I tend to use quite a lot for flowers um, is this book, A Flower Fairy's Treasury. Now I got this ages and ages ago, probably when I was about four or five from a relative. Um, I loved it. Um, if you don't know Cicely Mary Barker, she has created this so that the the flower that um, she's uh, drawn uh, represents the fairy. So uh, the fairy, sorry, no, the fairy kind of represents the, the flower or the, um, as in this case, the horse chestnut. They're, they're not all flowers. Um, but I, I love it and I would just sit and read this and it was so gorgeous. So you have all of the fairies at the front. Um, and then the crocus fairies. So as you can see, the fairies are kind of clothed in the same colours as the crocuses. And again, this is a really, really nice uh, book for realistic uh, images of the flowers. Um and it also shows, you know, if you wanted to take the colour palette of the flower and then um, use them to colour a person, you can already see how the flower colours have been mixed to create the, the person's outfit. So you could um, use that idea as well. This one was always one of my favourites, the Wild Rose one. It's gorgeous. I haven't actually used this for a long time, but I suddenly thought... Um, it is a great book for referencing and I do use it now and again. Obviously with um, the insert of stuff with flowers you can search them up but sometimes it's nice to have these books to just flick through as well and they're gorgeous. So um, 
that's that as well and again that's really really thick <clears throat> i'm not sure if you can get that anymore because it's um i don't know whether it's out of print or not but i will have a look uh, next thing which I absolutely love is uh, The Little Guide to Butterflies, um, illustrations by Tom Frost. Now, I don't use this necessarily um, for uh, butterfly colour palette. I don't use them to look for actual butterflies. So I actually got this um, when I finished Ivy and Inky Butterflies. My parents got it for me and like, oh, well done for um, doing it because it took ages and the nice thing was it was it was right before my birthday as well um and obviously it's fitting because it's butterflies but the other thing that i think is really nice about this is you can use it for color palettes in general so um uh, you could take these colors and replicate it you know you can do so much and i really like the interesting style that um his images take you know they're not uh, I, I think that they look quite collaged, but I don't re I don't really know how he created them, but they're gorgeous. And I believe there's a few more of these books. There's other books in the same series that you can get. Um, but there's information about them as well, which is another thing that I think is really nice. Um, the Peacock Butterfly is my favourite. Um, but yeah, it's, it's lovely. So that's The Little Guide to Butterflies. And then one other book that I've had for such a long time, and it's a big one, this, um, is A First Book of Nature by Nicola Davies. Now, I went to one of the Bath Book Festival uh, things. They do them every year. And um, I went a while ago, probably when I was like 10 maybe quite a while ago um, and I went to see Nicola Davies and Chris Riddle as well so obviously that was that was great and that's before I knew about some of his other books and stuff and before I'd even thought about ever colouring his um, things I was really into the goth girl books that he uh, wrote and I loved the Otterline ones when I was younger so I went to see them and Nicola Davies was kind of there to sign books and also show her new book because as, as well as the bit of writing that she does in this this is actually illustrated by Mark Huld and I love Mark Huld his work is amazing um but yeah I was seeing her and um looking at her books and stuff so they do collaborate quite a lot and I just love both the writing and Mark Huld's work so um I think where did she ah there so yeah, she signed it, which was amazing. Um, and again, I really, really like this for the referencing of the colour palettes. This spring one is gorgeous. I think he does a mixture. Sometimes he does lino prints, but mostly this is collage. I've seen some of his lino prints. They're amazing. Um, but again, this is a gorgeous colour palette. There's so much you can do. And Nicola Davies' work is just gorgeous to go along with it. They're little poems but they don't necessarily rhyme, which I think is, obviously it's a misconception with poetry that it has to rhyme. And I think sometimes the uh, poems that don't are very lyrical and they're just as lovely. So there's some gorgeous, gorgeous pictures here. And there's such a big scope to um, create pictures based from uh, the images. And you could just sit and look at these for ages. It's such a, a great mixed media example. Um, and I absolutely love it. And I remember we would just, again, sit and read and, and look at them. Um, I, I absolutely love it. So um, this is quite expensive, I think, because it's quite big. And obviously it's a hardcover. But it's definitely worth getting just for the colour palettes and the gorgeous um, illustrations and poetry. Hi everyone, so I just realised that I've forgotten a book to show you. So this is Botanicum, curated by Katie Scott and Kathy Willis. So this is, um, as you can see here, uh, the Royal Botanic Gardens, their Kew Gardens. And um, I absolutely love this book. I got it when we were 
um, away uh, for a weekend and I'd seen it ages ago and I hadn't got it but this was a this is a miniature version of the bigger books so um, so she's also done Animalium <clears throat> which I've now got the uh, colouring book of thanks to Susan um, Dinosaurium or something like that um, she's got the botanical one I, I can't remember um, she's got a couple but this style is amazing and what's great about these books is especially because this is miniature you're still getting um, loads and loads of images and information um, but it is a smaller book which is great so what you get is different sections and you get information about them and the names of them on one side and then all of the images on the other and they are all illustrated pictures of uh, the real thing so again it's really good to uh, have this to see the interpretation uh, of the design and you also get a bookmark as well this is a great coffee table book as well just um, as kind of a book just to look at because it's gorgeous there's so many different things as well and they're all numbered so that you can relate the number down here to the picture if you don't know what some of them are um, I'm going to try and find one of my favourite ones to show you. Not here, I thought it was, but... Where is it? Oh, this is so irritating now, I can't find it. Um... As you can see from me kind of flipping through these, you get loads and loads of various flowers. Um, maybe I've gone past it, but I remember seeing something specific that I really liked. <clears throat> I love those exotic pineapples. I love this one. And I think there was another one that I was... I really liked. Maybe not, maybe I've just gone past it, but um, it's a great book to both look at and use for colour palettes because as I've said about the others, you could just take this um, and create a picture out of it. So it doesn't even matter if you're not trying to replicate that particular flower or plant, but you want to take the colour palette of um, something and create a whole picture out of it. Um, but I think the variety in this is really, really good. And on the top left, they also have the different sections and I'm not sure if they're bookmarked no so you do just kind of go through them but it kind of goes from the first plants um, I've seen uh, from a while ago and then they kind of go into the more modern things as well so um, I would um, really glad that I remembered to show you this one because I really really like it and um, you can find the bigger massive massive version of it if you um, would like it but um, that's Botanicum by Katie Scott and Kathy Willis so I'm going to get on with the rest of the video now um, and I hope that the transition from the, the clips isn't too jagged so I apologise if it is you can pick up anything and create a colour palette out of it especially sometimes with referencing if you're doing referencing it's mainly because you've already got an idea um that we're referencing for a flower and you know you want to reference a daffodil and you want to find a picture of that but in this case um it's just things that will be lying around the house that you can use to create a color palette if you're struggling with that and um there's a couple of the things that i'm going to show you um that you can just find on the internet are for color palettes so um this for example this is um, from Kath Kidston and this is a gorgeous colour palette. I've got pyjamas in this as well because I absolutely love it. And I want to create a picture in Botanical Wonderland out of this. I haven't got round to it yet but I will do it at some point. You can just see that when you actually look at it the colours are quite minimal. You just have a white French grey colour and I can see, I can envision exactly what principal colours I would use. Um, and then you've got a couple of blues, so a turquoise, a dark blue and a light blue red and orange and a pink that's it so there's really not a lot and you can do so much with just small things with minimal color palettes and just create something gorgeous so this for example as well this notebook obviously there's minimal colors here it's blue in the background a few other blues yellow and red and it's lovely as well and it does this is great because it is the primary colors 
So it is red, yellow, blue, but taken slightly differently with the different colours of the blue, which still work really, really well. And the red is a bright red, but you could easily just change it and do a coral red or something if you wanted to. Um, so this, this is a decoupage paper that I got from Hobbycraft. I love the vintage look of this, and I think this would be brilliant for a colour palette. Um, I will kind of hold it here in case you wanted to um, do it as well. But here, again, you've got the lovely vintage um, kind of warm grey in the background, and then the few browns, and the green and blue. Um, it's it's just lovely. I absolutely love it. And then a couple of books, reading books. I mean, the covers on those are so amazing. And I think part of the thing, obviously you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I think one of the things that captures you right at the start and makes you want to pick up a book in a bookshop is the cover. Um, and obviously, you know, um, you obviously want to read a book because you think you'll enjoy it from the blurb. But some of these are lovely. So this deep light book that um, I haven't got around to reading yet because I haven't had much time to read lately. Um, but this one, I mean, the cover is amazing. This is watercoloured, I think. But um, again, this is just such a simple colour scheme when you think about it. You know, it's basically orange and blue. But the the difference in the, the tones that they've used, you know, they've got the blue here, but then a, a, a greenish blue and then... Um, these reflective bits um, of the blue and the purple it's it's lovely and um, you know some more kind of warm tones and stuff I, I really really love it and um, this book again um, you know it's a very very simple color palette but it's used really effectively and you know these are just great things that you can use that are just around the house and just create a colour palette out of it. I mean, even this, just realised here. Um, oh, that's great. They've just fallen. Sorry for the loud noise there. Um, but even this, which is some sticky notes that I got from Spain. I mean, this is a gorgeous colour palette. So part of the whole thing with um, packaging as well, it has to look great. And um, colour palette is a huge part of that finding lovely colours that go together um, and finally this book again and this is one of my favourite companies so Little Women um, this is Rifle Paper Co so it's a company I believe in America um, and it's stunning I love their work so much I'll show you a bit more in a minute um, but it's so it's so simple and it reminds me of folk art so much and I love it, absolutely love it. It's just, it's stunning. The other things that I've got to show you, which I'm just going to get now. Are these. So again, you've seen these quite a few times. But these are the books that I use for my gouache. So these are folk art designs, which you can get on Amazon. So Imagining a Forest in a Creature Garden. So these covers are gorgeous as well so these are really minimalistic in terms of colour but the colour palettes are so lovely all of this I think is created just out of a 12 set of gouache so it is amazing and the creature garden one takes it to that slight different level um, I love I love that I absolutely love that um, but this is more kind of animals and things so again if you wanted inspiration for um, specific animals there's a few in here um and you could even you know try and re re i can't speak replicate them in your coloring books um i love as well that they kind of break down everything but then you do get the main images here um it's just stunning it it really is there's so much that you can do um just by taking one thing and creating a picture out of it just using a simple color palette so now I'm going to show you um, two companies, sorry for shaking the camera, uh, two companies and one website that I use for colour palettes. So I'm just going to start with Kath Kidston. So, sorry, it is on the screen, this is really inconvenient. Um, but Kath Kidston have been around for a long time and, you know... <sighs> 
the basis of her work is just gorgeous and again she kind of does those simple colour palettes that really go together and I just think they they look amazing and I just I, I absolutely love her work and you, you know it's so effective because there are minimal colours but the way that people curate them into something lovely is, is amazing and it does take quite a quite a bit of time. The other one which I forgot to put on here which I'll show now oh oops is all Akili. So she's actually gone um bust actually but um I believe you can still get some of her stuff in various places. This is her most well known print here. We've actually got curtains um, with that design and some cushions um, but hers are so simple and yet the colours you would distinctly know just from that, those colours that they were all Akili even if you wanted to um, colour a picture using it you would know um, that it was all Akili it's, it's just amazing the other one obviously which I'm showing you now is rifle paper so um, the it's I just absolutely love it there's no words. I mean, there's some gorgeous, gorgeous things that they do, and I love that one. Love that one. And they're stylized just in an amazing way. Um, that would be a really nice one for a colour palette. I'm going to have to come back to these. Um, but I just think there's <clears throat> so much imagination in terms of the colours that's gone into them, and what you can create in your colouring books. Um, from these is is amazing love this one as well it's great so that's an example and then the uh company company not company they were just companies um the website that i use a lot for referencing for color palettes is design seeds i'm sure lots of you have heard of these oh my gosh so annoying these adverts oh no i don't even need to do anything with that so Design Seeds is great because um, what happens is it's a picture and then the picture is then um, divided up into six colours, five or six colours depending I think, um, and they kind of zoom in on certain colours and then put together a colour palette. So if you click on here with the Explore Now bit, um, it takes you to the daily um, the, the daily colour palettes that are put up. So I think they put about two up every day. This is a great one. This looks exactly like rifle paper. Um, but there's some lovely ones. Personally, I like the colour palettes that have a few different colours like this one or like the um, the one at the top. Some of them tend to be a bit samey. Um, I love that one as well in terms of being just all reds or, you know, just different... Uh, shades of the red which isn't really helpful for a colour palette um, but it's still great and you can also go by colour which is something really really cool so if you know in a picture that you want to include uh, purple for example you can click on purple and it will take you to all of the colour palettes that include purple in it so then you know if it will be easier to narrow down what you want to do uh, I think you would probably be able to zoom out a bit so you can get more than one um, at once to kind of compare them. Um, I believe you can also, I haven't really uh, looked at going by collection. Um, actually, yeah, yeah. So you can go on all of these as well, which is great. We've got this one, for example. And, you know, so if there are specific things, I love that one, if there's specific things you know you want to include, um, it does help. But if you have no idea for a colour palette, you can just go on this and have a look. So it's it's excellent for that sort of thing. So that was just kind of um, an idea of some stuff that you can find on the internet, as well as obviously loads of pictures of flowers and stuff. Um, but yeah, I hope this has helped in some way. Um, I didn't know if a, you kind of want to see this video obviously because it's a bit different from what I would usually do because it's not specifically relating to colouring um, books or, or anything like that. It obviously is relating to colouring because it's with colour palettes and referencing but it wasn't um, that sort of thing. But yeah I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, 
let me know in the comments if there's anything else related to this sort of thing that you would like to see um you know it's i think it, these um types of videos are things that i find really helpful and um i've seen other people do things you know they're kind of inspirational um things and obviously i've talked about those um quite a bit in this video with the seven companies and things um but yeah i hope this has helped um all my information is down below i will try and link those first two books that i showed the wildflowers one and the flower fairies one just because they're a bit different and a bit more obscure as i said um but yeah feel free to go down in the comments below or email me for any other suggestions so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video